pay for perceived value events might be one more option for you to consider if you're trying to add alternative events to your stable of events and think outside the box with your fundraising efforts. Watch this video to find out more about this exciting option. Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and this channel is designed to help you raise more money for your nonprofit. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you hear. Let's get started. It's been said that a rut is a grave with the sides knocked out. Getting into a rut is one of the worst things can happen to a fundraising program. Doing the same strategies over and over will build complacency with your donor base and burn out your staff. Don't get me wrong. If your events and strategies are working and your partners are happy, please continue doing those things until something changes. But sometimes your funding strategies just need a jump start or a bit of new life pumped into them. Or you may need to add another strategy so that you aren't so dependent on one particular effort. Remember, no income strategy should bring in more than 30% of your income. Let me say that again. No income strategy should bring in more than 30% of your income because you become too vulnerable when that happens. One wrong step or incorrect decision with regard to that strategy could set you back for a long time. A pay for perceived value event might be just the ticket to giving your efforts the boost that they need. A pay for perceived value event is defined as an event in which attendees or participants pay for a ticket or pay to participate and receive something of value in return while a portion of the proceeds are used for the nonprofit or sponsoring organization. Types of pay for perceived value events include a benefit concert. That's a concert performed by a well-known entertainer in which ticket sale prices are used for the sponsoring organizations. Black tie event. That's a formal dinner in which profits for the sale of tickets for plates or tables are used to benefit the sponsoring organizations. Golf tournament. That's an event in which golfers pay a flat fee to play 18 holes of golf with the excess profits being used for the sponsoring organization. An auction. That's an event, live or online, in which items are donated or provided at reduced prices to an organization and sold to the highest bidder among participants with excess revenue being used for the sponsoring organization. If done correctly and with excellence, pay for perceived value events are highly effective and will yield significant returns on investment for your organization. Here's the keys to implementing a successful pay for perceived value event. Key number one, strategy. Pay for perceived value events are designed to have a twofold benefit. They allow the donor to do something they like to do or value, but can now do so with the net proceeds going to a nonprofit organization they like or value. The biggest challenge is finding the right fee to charge for the activity while also leaving enough net proceeds that the event will be worth all the work it takes to run the activity. The activity, a black tie dinner, concert, golf tournament, or auction, must be of great value, enough for the participant to pay a larger than normal fee. But as I said, that fee can't be too large that it isn't worth the cost of doing, but large enough that it gives a worthwhile surplus to the organization. Pay for perceived value events don't normally net as much as direct ask events, but they do add a level of connectedness or entertainment value that's appealing to current or prospective donors. People will come to a pay for perceived value event that won't come to a direct ask event. Ideally, planning should begin at least 16 to 20 weeks in advance, and of course 24 would be perfect. It's important to remember that getting a big name entertainer or venue or golf club may require reservations a year or even years in advance. A timeline should be created listing all tasks that need to be performed in order to pull off the event. It's critical that the right people are invited to attend, whether that be a, a black tie event or a golf tournament. Auctions can attract people just interested in a bargain with no interest in the sponsoring organizations. So be especially cautious in who you invite to those events. 
the real key to a pay per perceived value event is finding the activity that attracts a certain group of donors who can afford a relatively high fee or do the activity on a regular basis and can see spending a bit more to help a worthwhile cause. The key is to find a win-win scenario where the donor feels they're getting something of value and your organization feel the net proceeds are more than outweighing the effort it takes. A critical component of any successful event is follow-up. Many organizations are focused on the bottom line that they neglect the thank you and reporting back for how the money was used, or in other words, the outcome. Key number two, who to invite. A market analysis should be done to determine who best to invite to the pay, per, pay for perceived value event. For black tie events, and for the most part golf tournaments, large donors, that's $5,000 or more a year, should be extended this opportunity. For auctions and concerts, this can be offered to your entire donor base. Or if seating is limited, or foursomes are limited, inviting in waves can be done. Start with your major donors, then your mid-level donors, then monthly donors before going to the entire donor base. The cost of the activity will be in and of itself a qualifier for the event and help you determine who should be there. Major donor events will be attended by those who can afford large entry fees. Mass donors will be attracted to events with smaller fees. A saying if I, that I've heard is, if they can't afford the fee, they shouldn't be at that event makes sense. Key number three, location or venue. Be sure to choose your location carefully. There's a few videos on this channel addressing choosing a venue and negotiating meals and other amenities. Check those out immediately after this video. Be sure to shop price and quality, but since you're charging people a fee for the activity or experience, you have a little latitude in negotiating. You can order an upscale menu for a black tie event. For golf tournaments, find a club that is either private or very attractive and desirable. And find a course everyone dreams of playing. But your venue or golf course needs to be a place that will attract current or potential major donors. But if your intention is to only have major donors, then you set the fee high enough that only attracts major donors. But as far as quality of the venue, trust me, spending a little extra money to get an attractive venue will draw just the right donors and should eventually lead to larger gifts. For concerts, you will want to find a venue that, you can, that will accommodate large numbers if you're getting a big name entertainer. Key number four, date and time. Pick a date that takes into consideration what works best for your organization and your community. March 15th and May 15th and September 15th and November 15th is always best for most parts of the United States. If your event is outside the U.S., check best seasons of the year for events. With rare exceptions, Fridays and Saturdays are the best days to do an event. Our goal is to get both the husband and the wife to attend. Weekdays and weeknights may cause only one of the parties to attend. Factor in work times and traffic. Key number five, setup. In most cases, use round tables that hold six to eight per table and eight to 10 for the auction. For a black tie event where there is a large ticket price or table fee, major donors will not want to feel crowded or feel like they're part of a cattle call. You have more flexibility with auctions. Concerts are generally theater style seating in either a ballroom or a performing arts venue. Key number six, program. For black tie events, the program should include a master of ceremonies, a special or keynote speaker, music and visual presentations. Organizational leaders and testimonials of lives changed as a result of the organization should also be included. Golf tournaments should include a time to present the mission of the sponsoring organization, normally a banquet that evening after golfing with a complimentary meal. The same for a concert. Finding an appropriate time to share about your organization is imperative. Making it a public relations opportunity and more than just a fundraising opportunity through ticket sales. Key number seven, the appeal. An appeal for a pay per perceived value event is very similar to appeal at a direct ask event, but the difference is in the expectations. If you decide to do an appeal, and that is not a given, as you may be satisfied with the net proceeds from ticket sales or fees at a pay per perceived value event. But if you decide to make an appeal, you need to have a firm grasp on expectations. If someone has paid a fee for a ticket or a table or green fee for a tournament, just know that the person may believe the donation was factored into that fee and will give significantly less than if you were offering them a complimentary meal, for example. Therefore, you either need to, number one, 
Factor in a donation into the fee. Two, don't ask at all. Or three, manage the expectations for what you hope to get from that appeal. Should you decide to do an appeal, do so as the climax of the evening. A proven strategy includes a first and second half appeal, which includes ways to give in the beginning, including how the money was used and allowing people at the end an opportunity to process and pray about their giving and the opportunity to fill out a commitment card or envelope. Opportunities to give will be tonight or over time. The best appeals assure that each person is given the opportunity to help support the work that they just heard about. Ways to give include an immediate gift tonight, commitment over time, and in cases of faith-based organizations, a faith promise. Key number eight, follow-up procedures and reporting back. Whether you have an appeal or not, you still need to factor in follow-up as part of your process. Not having an appeal still means every attendee gets a thank you letter or email. If they make a gift or commitment, that should be included in the thank you with ways to fulfill the commitment. Reporting back on how their gift or donation was used is essential. This could include as often as monthly or at a minimum every six months. A gift becomes one time when a donor doesn't know how their money was used, especially the outcome. Key number nine, the bottom line. A typical benefit concert with 100 to 250 attendees can bring in 2,500 to 5,000 or more at a cost of less than $500. Your overall results will be determined by how big the name of the entertainer is and whether you can get a discount from that person. A typical black tie dinner charging $100 to $1,000 per ticket or table can generate $15,000 to $150,000 at a cost of $15,000 to $30,000. Typical golf tournament that offers one round of golf at an exclusive club at a cost of $100 to $250 a round can bring in $100,000 or more at a cost of $20,000 to $35,000. A typical auction, live or online, can raise five dollars to $10,000 at a cost of $1,500 to $2,000. But of course, some auctions do much more. A pay per perceived value event can be the final tool needed for your tool belt or at least to diversify your portfolio of fundraising activities. Proper planning and preparation are essential to success and following the criteria mentioned in this video is imperative. Now's the best time to start. Do it now. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you're having fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java or email me at a developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.